We're talking to Dr. Leonard Madhu, and the uh, topic is the strategic uh, implications of the Horn of Africa. And of course, Dr. Madhu has given us some excellent information concerning some of the real problems uh, dealing with this particular section of uh, Africa and how these problems are related all across the uh, continent. <clears throat> and unless some solution, Dr. Madhu, uh, can be found, I would imagine then we're not, we will never be able to solve the problems of uh, famine, uh, starvation, and some of the other problems that sim simply plague the horn. Is that what we're saying? Let's continue our conversation in reference to that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, for example, Somali, Somalia exports currently, mostly is, is exports now comprised of bananas and uh, livestock since mm -hmm. whatever was left of the economy before has been completely destroyed by the civil war. Mm -hmm. I take for example Ethiopia, 80% of Ethiopia's uh, you know, income comes from coffee, you know, which, which was mortgaged mm -hmm. to the Soviet Union mm -hmm. by the Mengistu regime in order to receive billions of dollars in arms to fight the Eritrean and internal insurrections. Mm -hmm. Djibouti hardly exports anything apart from livestock. Most of its income comes from the railway, you know, from Addis Ababa to Djibouti, which mm -hmm. it charges, and also from tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, Eritrea hardly exports anything either. You know, after 1998-99 war, the economy is in shambles. Mm -hmm. and the government of Eritrea rejects foreign aid, mm -hmm. saying it, it can't mm -hmm. do without mm -hmm. it. But experience has shown that it couldn't, mm -hmm. you know. So Sudan, you know, it's a little bit different because of the influx of uh, oil, oil mm -hmm. revenue. You see? Mm -hmm. So that's very important, the, the economic mm -hmm. uh, dependency of, of the Horn of Africa, mm -hmm. you know, is, 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 so, is so much mm -hmm. that without foreign aid, most of the economies will collapse mm -hmm. completely, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, well, Dr. Madhu, since it seems that uh, uh, all of these, many of these problems can be said to go back to uh, colonialism, uh, it would seem to me that uh, some of these uh, former colonial countries would uh, feel that they had some kind of responsibility. Uh, do they ever, do, have they, is there any kind of forum whereby they can uh, deal with this? Uh, is there anything that you can do to bring them in, into this, a solution to this, uh, uh, these questions that are on the horn? Well, that, that would be very difficult to do. Uh, if, if you talk about uh, irredentist ambitions, mm -hmm. Uh, the AU African Union Charter, you know, talks about the inviolability of frontiers. Mm -hmm. the, the United Nations Charter also talks about the inviolability of frontiers. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if a foreign government, you know, starts saying, well, the Somali government who want you to forget about mm -hmm. the other Somalis in Ethiopia mm -hmm. or, or in Kenya, then they will be accused of interfering in the internal mm -hmm. affairs of, uh, mm -hmm. of another sovereign country. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the problem. But at the same time, those countries will turn around and ask for aid. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't want to take care, you mm -hmm. know, solving their own internal problems mm -hmm. when they're advised to. And that, that's the problem. Uh, they shout, in you know, interference in the affairs, but mm -hmm. at the same time they turn around and ask you for money, mm -hmm. just like you said a mm -hmm. few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Why should the U.S. be pumping money mm -hmm. into these countries, mm -hmm. you know, when they're not listening on how to mm -hmm. bring their own people together mm -hmm. to solve their internal problems? Mm -hmm. Most of those problems are solvable, mm -hmm. but it seems that the leaders themselves are so corrupt that they're interested in, in keeping you know, control of, 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 of their respective countries. At any cost. At, yeah. at any cost. Mm -hmm. Exploit the ethnic uh, uh, and, 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 and racial mm -hmm. and the religious sentiments of their people for their own advantage. Mm -hmm. That's what you see all over the country, mm -hmm. continent. Well, now, uh, uh, what do you see as uh, some of the possible solutions in terms of what, we, what goes on there, Dr. Madhu? Well, uh, I, think, I think, first, first of all, most of those countries uh, should not receive any, any grants or loans from mm -hmm. international institutions unless they make, you know, far-reaching reforms mm -hmm. in their own economic and political systems. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to bring some of them to, mm -hmm. to, to, to listen, mm -hmm. you know. For example, some of the French African countries, mm -hmm. about almost 80, 70 percent of their income comes from France. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a country like Swaziland mm -hmm. gets almost 80 percent of its income from foreign donations mm -hmm. now, you know. So some of those countries can, can be made to listen, mm -hmm. you know, if, 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 if they will implement reforms in their country before, mm -hmm. you know, getting assistance from, from mm -hmm. the United States or the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so it's sort of a bleak prospect in a real sense of ever making any real